drunkards, I lost as his minions arose. For tonight was the night of Junkenstein's revenge. Are they serious? This again? I mean, they didn't even change anything. It's been like, what, four years now? Nothing's changed. What are you doing here? <laughs> Reaper is one of the original Overwatch characters, and one of the main antagonists of this universe. His real name is Gabriel Reyes, and he first was a part of Overwatch as one of its founders, working alongside Jack Morrison, Ryan Hart, Torbjorn, and Anna. Before Overwatch, Gabriel and Jack were a part of a soldier enhancement program. Gabriel became Soldier 24, and Jack, Soldier 76. And these two were inseparable. They were bros. Once they joined Overwatch, and Overwatch successfully stopped the Omnic Crisis, Overwatch chose Jack to become Strike Commander, while putting Gabriel in charge of Blackwatch, which handled more covert operations. Gabriel trained McCree and Genji while working close with Moira in Blackwatch, but he hated that Jack got so much more attention and praise, while he got none. So Gabriel began organizing a rebellion within Overwatch, which resulted in a fight and an explosion that killed both himself and Jack. Okay guys, that's it. He died. That's the end of the video. Just kidding, he faked his death and had Moira change his genetic makeup and give him new abilities. He and Moira joined Talon, and he quickly became a leader within that organization. With Talon, he attempted to kill Winston and hack Overwatch's database. He kind of failed. He worked with Talon to steal a Doomfist and, uh, failed? He tried to kill Soldier 76 in Egypt, but ultimately failed? Okay, well, uh, I'm noticing a pattern here. He infiltrated Voskaya with Sombra, and, well, Sombra kind of backstabbed him, and then, well, I guess, well... Reaper kind of sucks at being a bad guy. What a loser. <laughs> but he is really good in game as one of the damage heroes. So now that you know a little bit about Reaper, let's learn how to play him, shall we? Reaper's weapons are the Hellfire Shotguns. In close range, they do insane damage, up to seven damage per pellet with 20 pellets a shot. From afar, they are kind weak, but if barrels stuffed into someone's face, they can one-shot opponents. Reaper's weapons have a widespread, making them better for killing thick characters and shredding tanks. Winston may not have died in the cinematic, but in game? <laughs> Winston is a dead monkey, boy! Reaper is decent at shredding through shields as well in close range, so Reinhardt's are also a big, easy target to deal with. Dude, Zenyatta is like my favorite person to shoot. His hitbox is no, huge. Stop. We'll say that. Reaper has a passive ability called the Reaping. This is essentially a lifesteal. 40% of damage he does, he gets back in health. So even at lower health, Reaper can still win fights if doing enough damage. This does get stopped by Ana's nade, but what doesn't? However, Reaper is one of the few characters that can cleanse himself from Ana's nade with his ability, Wraith Form. This lasts up to three seconds. And during this time, Reaper takes no damage and can pass through enemies while also going 50% faster. And it reloads all his ammo. It can be canceled at any time, so it's good if you just need ammo ASAP. He is one of the few characters that can get out of a Zarya grab or a Sigma flux. You can dodge a lot of ultimates too. Welcome to the team. But for some reason, you can't dodge a trap? Like, come on, Jeff. This ability is what makes Reaper an exceptional brawler and a decent flanker. He can get in, secure a kill, and then get out. But Macro, you just said he's a good flanker. How can he get in in the first place? Well, you can use Reaper's last ability, Shadow Step. Shadow Step allows for you to teleport up to 35 meters in any direction. Up, down, left, right, do the Reaper dance all tonight. This means you can get up to high places or across the map without anyone seeing. This is good for challenging enemies on the high ground. Facts. <laughs> oh, oh, I'm asleep. Top. Got him. Or quickly escaping an area. Combined with Wraith Form, Reaper can go deep into the back line and you can get a quick kill or two. I got one, I got one. <laughs> nice. Let's go, free kill. Reaper's ultimate is the Death Blossom, AKA die, die. Die. This ultimate has Reaper spin around doing 170 damage per second for three whole seconds in an eight meter radius. It's incredibly strong for finishing up a kill and insanely good if the enemies are clustered up. Die, die, die. 
big? Bro. Break, 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 one, one. The carry's here. It was me the whole time. However, it can be canceled pretty easily by a McCree stun or an honest sleep. So make sure they already used that before you ult. Let's go. Oh my God. But if you set this up really well, it can be devastating. I don't know what this is, but it's kind of hot. You can use it in combination with Zarya's Graviton Surge for an easy team wipe. Or with the Nano Boost, you can do the infamous Beyblade combo. Let it rip. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go. Let's cool. go. Let's play the game, baby. Let's play the game. There you go. There you go. Free time. I let two people live so that you can shine. <laughs> Shut up. I'm cutting that out. I'm cutting that out of the video. Even when flanking, this ultimate is beautiful and can team wipe with ease. Oh god. <laughs> Let's go! Oh my oh, god! There he is! Oh my god! I didn't even need a nano, you did. I didn't even need a nano. It was such a clean flank. They had no idea. Nice. They had no okay. idea. Sometimes you just gotta use it on a solo kill, okay? I get it. We all do it. It happens. Since you have lifesteal, the ultimate can even work mid fight when your health is low. Basically, when you have Death Blossom and you're out of ammo, you know, why not? Just use it. So, I'm not the best Reaper player, but I'm being forced to make this video by a Reaper toy, so please listen to these pro tips or he's gonna hurt me. Number one, Reaper is an insane tank buster, but one tank can deal with him easily, and that's Roadhog. <laughs> Roadhog can one-shot Reaper, but if he misses his hook, Reaper wins this 1v1. It's honestly a 50-50, so make sure you dodge the hook and then attack the Roadhog. Number two, Reaper can't deal with Pharah or Snipers that well. That's it. That's the whole tip. If you're up against a Widowmaker or a Pharah, please, you are allowed to switch. It's okay. Look, I know your name is Reaper420. I get it. You want to always use Reaper, but... It's okay to switch. Number three, you can use your shadow step in the air. So if you get booped, you can get back on the map. Practice doing this. It can save the day for you and your team. Number four, Reaper is great for stalling a point since he's able to touch the point in his wraith form and he can single-handedly swing a fight with a few decent picks, especially since he has the lifesteal ability. So go in there and, what? What do you want? Is that not a good enough tip for you? I, I can't be doing this. You can't force me to do this. I'm done. I'm done. You hear me? I'm done. Overall, Reaper is a very fun DPS hero to play and works well with most team compositions, especially when the enemy team is running fat tanks. But how is he for noobs? For noobs, I would say he's pretty easy to play. Just understanding fundamentally when to go in and out of a fight is all you really need to do to be a good Reaper main. But what do you think? Do you think Reaper is easy to play? Do you think Reaper is hard to play? Do you think he needs buffs or needs nerfs? Let me know in the comments down below. I hope you enjoyed this extra spooky video, even though it wasn't really that spooky, but uh, I'll catch you later. You noob! Thank <laughs> you.